uh, Oracle database performance tuning optimization uh, uh, tidbits or quick session that we have planned. So unfortunately, we won't be able to cover AWR as that was of utmost important uh, importance, uh, and that's why we asked for another one and a half or you know some, something like that time to cover the remainders. All right. So today will be all about AWR Ash. So without wasting any time, I'll quickly jump into one of the few of the AWR reports that I have generated from a few of the systems where we have problems. Right. So this session will be all about like first of all, I would like I, I would actually start with the introduction. What exactly is AWR report? How frequently it got generated? What is the process which actually collects this information for the database? So AWR is basically a statistics report. So it stands for Automatic Workload Repository. And uh, there is this background process called MMON. So MMON process is one of the mandatory process uh, that is uh, within the Oracle database that keep on collecting Oracle, uh, 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 I mean, uh, system statistics, which covers user I/O, system operations, wait events, and a lot of other things. So every second, it you know, it simply go and connects with the database, with its memory, with its dynamic view, and everything, and collects that information within a specific pool in the AWR repository. So that's the physical location of uh, of all AWR contents that you are actually seeing. All right. So if we talk about generation of the AWR reports, uh, we discussed this yesterday as well. Like you will be able to generate the AWR report or Ash reports using your SQL Developer. You only have to enable the DBA tab. Once you enable the DBA tab in your SQL Developer window, then automatically you just need to create the connection. Once the connection is established. Then you can go and you know uh, can generate the AWR report. So, uh, in continuation with what I said uh, in last class, like it requires few specific privileges. The very important privilege is select any dictionary, and second privilege is which uh, which will be really great if you have it is DBMS underscore workload underscore repository. So these two are the important privileges or permissions. Once you have that permission to your account. That account will be able to generate AWR reports, Ash reports, and query query lot of things. So, suppose if you have any requirement and uh, you, you simply have to ask your DBA grant this, uh, create a you know a monitor account or a sample schema or an account in Oracle database and ask your DBA to grant these two permission to that specific account. Select any dictionary and DBMS underscore workload underscore repository. So once these two permission will uh, will be added to that account, you will be able to generate AWR reports using that uh, uh, DBA tab within the uh, SQL developer. OK, so for example, you have that report ready and uh, uh, let's discuss about this production problem. You have received a complaint from the customer saying, OK, entire system is slow. I'm not sure uh, what exactly went wrong, but everything was smooth and working fine till two hours back or one hour back or 30 minutes back. But now everything started, you know, getting very slow. It stalled, or freezed. I mean, we are not even able to do anything. Usually, query takes around 15 minutes, but now it started taking around one hour, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, right? So, elapse, elapse time has been increased, and we see a lot of other issues. So, ultimately, this is not specific or relevant to any individual SQL statement, but this is for the entire Oracle database. Everything is so slow. Every mod module, every program, every part of the of the product is working slow. So, in that scenario, of course. You, your DBA will start doing its own investigation, but it's always good because you guys are developers. You have good understanding, a good thought process about your own product. So it's always good to uh, actually to ask uh, your DBAs to provide the AWR report. But yeah, along with the Ash reports, I'll show you what how important Ash report is and how it will be helpful to you know to maneuver or to craftly move your analysis and to reach the conclusion, right? OK, uh, about the AWR report, it was introduced in 2010, uh, two, uh, version 10, sorry, Oracle 10, I guess. Before that, we have something called stats pack. The, that is almost, the look and feel is almost look like AWR report, except few of the sections were missing. But since the inception of 10G, especially 10G release one, we have this thing called AWR report. And since then, the you know, the product or this feature got very matured, matured and now we see N number of things coming in pending or added it to the AWR reports every with every uh, newer release of Oracle database. So if we uh, so for example you have that problem and the customer complained and everything was slow. So if you generated the AWR report using the DBA tab of your SQL developer and you have opened that AWR report in your web browser. So this is how the AWR looks like. This is the you know the overall 
appearance or uh, the home page, the landing page of AWR report, which provides you some basic information like what is the name of the database, right? Second is the DBID instance and release of the database. So this report was generated on 10G release to patch set 4 database. It was a non rack database. No rack, no means non rack database. And this <coughs> second thing is this provides you some begin snap and end snap information. So begin snap is the point where you actually started collecting the AWR report and the end time. I mean, this will be basically the the uh, the probe window or the probe period. For example, you want to understand what exactly happened from 930 on 31st of January 2000 till 10, right? So you want to understand what all what exactly happened during this, this period of almost 30 minutes, right? So this is the begin snap and the end snap means. Second is the elapsed time and the most important is the DB time. So these two are very important metrics. For example, elapsed time is nothing. Elapsed time is only the wall clock time of your AWR report. That means you have generated AWR report for almost 30 minutes, right? So it's a 30 minute long period of AWR report. But DB time is what? DB time is basically a combination or a sum of every operation that has happened into the database. For example, a query comes, it you know, it start to uh, you know scan the memory area of your database, but due to some reason, it started taking time. So that time will be counted, right? And and in parallel, because database uh, doesn't work serially, it works parallelly. So within a period of second, for example, in, if you have a very busy system, within a fraction of seconds, you see thousands of SQLs coming and modifying or querying anything in uh, from your database. So that's how the database works, right? So it doesn't work serially, it works parallelly. And it depends on the CPU, IO, right? And uh, the machine configuration and a lot of other things. And CPU count sockets, which enables or which makes your database more uh, efficient and quick and performant, right? So this this metric DB time is of utmost importance because if you do a divide, if you do this 15103.15 by 29.81, let's do the maths. 15103.15 divide by 29.81. Point eight one. This will give you 506. What is this this value? This figure. This means within any within uh, uh, this this basically this number is 506.64 is the average number of active sessions. What we call as AAS in short. So average number of active session represents at any point at any given point of time during those 29 minutes during those 30 minutes we have these many sessions active in the database and doing some work. They they, they are not. It, it doesn't count the sessions which are idle or not doing work, right, or inactive. This represents the workload, how busy your system was at that point of time. So during those 30 minutes, around every second or every minute of your AWR or those 30 minutes, we have 506 sessions actively doing any work in your database. This number so or this... Prasant, uh, yeah. Prasant, sorry for the interruption. This should be... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Prashant, does it mean that uh, when a process is taking longer than it should take, right? Uh, that is is in that situation, the number of average number of uh, active sessions will be more. Mm -hmm. No, this average number of active sessions will be more or higher in case when you have sessions which are all started waiting on something. And you have subsequent sessions coming, which will, which also tries to get a get their hands on those on those respective logs. For example, I uh, just give me another five minutes, so I'll show you what this AAS represents, right? So just give me a few more time, some more time, right? So this 506 figure, this number is of very important. Uh, this this number is very important, and the rule of thumb is, for example, if you have 32 CPU, and you have average number of active sessions coming as 506. So if you divide 32 with, with 506, that means single CPU is is handling those that, that many records. For example, 506, if we divide with 32, that means single CPU has is handling 15.8, almost 16 average number of active session requests. That means it's too much, right? Ultimately, this uh, let me check how many CPUs are there in the system. Uh, Old report. I'm not sure if uh, number of CPUs. Okay, this was 16 CPU system, and 506. If you do a divide on 16, so 
single CPU is handling 31.6 requests or almost 32 active sessions at any given point of time. So this is way too much, right? So that this is what the rule of thumb says. OK, now coming back. So whenever you open, you know what? I mean, guys, uh, these are I will be able uh, now I'm going to unleash, you know, able to uh, discuss about few of the things which even, you know, uh, some of the DBAs don't even understand. They even you, you, I've seen a lot of the uh, seen a lot of DBAs in my career who not even sure how to proceed, how to go ahead and how to dissect this AWR report. They have no idea about this workload information and everything. In fact, those are the people who have experience carry experience more than 10 years or 12 years. So the these things are very important are you know, uh, this is what I learned over the period of time, right? While doing performance uh, investigation on the systems. So this is the very important metric in newer releases of Oracle. You've seen another section AS, which is doing, you know, the calculations. You need not to calculate this by your own or manually. The AS number will be automatically derived for you, but those will be in AWR reports and 12C release too, I guess. And usually uh, it, it, it comes with Azure reports as well. Okay, so that's the very first thing. I mean, you have to check in your AWR report, but someone can ask me like how I will be able to know like if this AAS number is is higher or lower lower. I mean, we have something some benchmarks, right? Like at this point of time in in uh, uh, during our weekdays, we have uh, average number of active session or workload somewhere around 50 or 60. But if your system is, you know, is always busy and it's always stay like 500 or 550, then it's of no use, right? So you can say that, OK, no. This is something that is acceptable and we know that our system is busy. So it's of I mean, this is nothing to be to be alarmed or you know to be afraid of. We I know that the system is showing AAS as 506 or fi above 500, but this is the normal behavior during this specific. This is uh, this is called as a peak time of our system of our database. So this is something expected, right? So you know your system better, right? And if you want to do uh, that kind of comparative study, what you can do, you can generate the AWR report for the same duration one day ago, one day, uh, you know, previously, or maybe two days back. What was the status? What was the workload at that point of time? So that will give you some idea, so come some something to compare, right? You generated this report was for 31st of January, generated for 30 uh, 30th January, and see uh, for the same duration 9:30 to 10. What was the average number of active session? What was the total DB time? Right, so that's how you will be able to do the comparison. We'll be able to know if this is something higher, lower, or this is average or acceptable. Right? Any questions? Okay. Now, another section is the load profile. This is one more important section, and uh, this provide you some really good information. The first one is the redo size, like how much redo was generated during that specific period. So, redo size, as as we discussed uh, last day. Like uh, redo information is generated when you modify or manipulate anything in your database. In case of select, you won't see redo generated, right? So if you do an update, inserts, right, and uh, deletions, uh, trunk, uh, not truncate, uh, but alter. So if you are modifying anything, right, so that will incur or generate the redo in your database. So it means uh, again. How how you can know how you'll be able to understand if this redo size is 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 average or if this okay or not, or this is this is really high. So for, again, for that you have to do the compar uh, comparison. Uh, and there is this another report called as AWR compare report, right? So you need not to generate two different report and do the comparison, uh, right, manually. But there is this functionality called AWR compare report. So I'll be explaining about that, but yeah, let's first stick what all sections are of importance. So redo size, how much redo was generated? Logical reads means the, re the request or blocks which were re which were read uh, from the memory, not from the disk, from the memory. So one can ask you ask us a question like, if the logical reads are higher, then that is something really good because memory scan or memory uh, you know traversing is happening so it's not reading anything from the disk because disk operations are always always expensive or costly so if something or some session is doing any scan or a read from the memory so it is really good but that's not the case there are few scenarios where you'll see like uh, even the case of logical reads are you know uh, uh, proved to be havoc for your database and cause some really great fiascos in your system so 
Uh, let's not jump into the conclusion. Again, uh, there is always a great scope of getting false positives. So you have first need to do your analysis because uh, it seems like logical reads is, is a good figure. So every session should read their, the blocks from the memory because accessing anything from the memory is always quick. But one thing comes along with that. Anything that you, everything or anything that you do in the memory, you need to acquire a lock, a latch basically. So you have, if you want to read anything, first you need to acquire a lock and then only Oracle database will permit that session to scan or to traverse that list which contains information of the blocks. So that's why if your system is busy and there is already a shortage of locks or latches, then of course uh, uh, logical reads or memory reads are very expensive. In fact, the, if we do a comparison with the with the physical reads, physical mean, uh, physical reads mean when you are reading something from the disk, doing a disk I/O, right? Read IOPS. So even if you compare it with the physical reads, uh, they comes out to be very expensive. I'm talking about logical reads. So that's the case. So all right. So logical reads uh, means when you're reading, when your session is reading something from the memory, and then uh, comes the block changes. I mean, tw almost 300 blocks got uh, got changed during that period. Block change means block contains some information, row specific information. So if, if any session comes and modify, for example, value 10 to 11, that will count as a one. One row was changed. One block was changed. So that's how this counter was increased. Physical reads when you're doing PIOs or physical IOs, when you're reading not from the memory, but things are not present in the memory, this query is coming for the very first time. So it has to actually go and read that those specific number of blocks from the disk. So that means physical reads. Physical writes means simple. Physical writes mean if you're doing write operations, if you're doing an insert, if you're doing an update, right? So that will simply go and write it, the, that information into the disk and make the data persistent. User calls, I mean, how many users, user, I mean, uh, the user requests were actually uh, found to be the, uh, found running during those 30 minutes. Parses, how many parses happened? It could be ha uh, hard or soft, but this is a total count. So hard parse. Hard parse means when a, th this query comes for the very first time and uh, it is not sharing anything, it has to parse, it has to uh, you know plan everything by its own because the, the pre-parsed version is not available in the pool or in the memory area of Oracle because this is a this is a new entrant. This is the very first time this SQL is and uh, it's SQL is coming and hitting the database. So that's why it will surely go for a hard parse. There are certain other reasons as well. Like even after the you know query is running for you know two days, but still it's not sharing anything. Right? I will I will be discussing maybe later on. Next is the sorting. Sorting means, for example, if you do an aggregate function, uh, um, like order by, group by, or doing a count. So sort count will be higher if you are processing or if you are querying your database uh, through those kind of operations, right? Through those uh, sorting operations. And then uh, logons and execute and transactions. Um, all right. And next comes is the instance efficiency percent uh, percentages. Target is always 100%, but yeah, remember guys, this is an older approach. Like uh, this, th some old school DBA still follow this approach. Like they always first check for the soft pass percentage, execute to pass, buffer hit, and library uh, library hit. And they simply declare system pro uh, problematic if they see anything, any number that is goes beyond 100% because target, target is 100%. So for example, if someone uh, that old school DBA sees it's, 95.88%. Uh, I mean, buffer hit is only 95.88%. Simply declare system. Okay, there has there is definitely some problem. But this that's an older approach. But nowadays, you know, the fresh approach, which is uh, you know circulating among the performance consultants, is always rely on weight event approach, Oracle weight interface. Rely on that information. Do not jump uh, or, uh, into any conclusion only after reading this hit or miss ratios. Right? This is an older approach, and system database has been changed a lot since then. So you need not to rely on the instance efficiency percentage. So that's why I'm not focusing much on this one. But yeah, it will be really good if uh, you know the percentage are close to 100. But that is not any rule of thumb or any you know something hard and fast like okay, uh, if the soft pass percentage is only 90 and it should be 100, so there is a gap of 10%. So there is definitely a problem. No, it's not. You have to first analyze, right? Okay. Next come. Top five weight events. Guys, this is the most important section within the entire AWR report. 
what are the timed events and what exactly is this term called event event is for example if there is one session if you remember yesterday we covered we uh, we uh, did an exercise a demonstration where one of the session updated one record and it forgot and it went on the, the guy went on lunch and you know uh, you know it failed he actually failed to do a commit or a rollback or to close the session or to close the putty session right so he simply forgot that and at the same time when the guy was away another one came and he actually tried to modify the same row right and but he because the first session didn't commit anything the second session you know started waiting on an event called as nq tx row lock contention so this these are in total in oracle we have i guess you know more than 1500 different wait events and that represents specific problems or specific things for example here you see the nq tm row lock uh, uh, nq tm contention tm contention is basically nothing it represents the table level lock for example, you have a table. If, for example, I am a DB and I have and I have every access in the database. I can mon I can uh, alter. I can modify anything in the database. So I was actually doing some work and I, you know, and doing that activity, I forgot to to release the lock from the table. And then the user session come try to modify something there in the table because the table is already because the entire table is in exclusive lock mode. So the second session, the user session won't be able to do anything. And that session will start getting NQTM contentions. And so this time, it, the, it, the, uh, the session, the, the, uh, the waiter session, the user session doesn't get the row lock contention. This time, it, they will get NQTM contention. TM contention stands for table level locking or table level contention. So if you see, that means during those 30 minutes, we have these many total weights. I mean, uh, 10,000, 10,000 lakh, 167,523 times. I mean, these many times session came and actually tried to modify anything, but they failed to acquire a lock on the table due to some reason, and ultimately they have to wait. So that's why uh, the wait counter will be increased. So in total, 487 seconds, 487,064. This is this time is quite huge. Now someone can ask me like how this time uh, uh, will be so high when this AWR report is only 30 minutes. How come the uh, you know the second time is oh, okay? Let me first convert. Okay, 135 or how it's possible, right? So someone can ask me like this AWR report is of only 30 minutes. How the total time of these wait events is of 135 hours? It's not possible, right? It's possible because if we are talking about database, we are not talking about our wall clock time, right? That has 60 seconds. No, we are not talking about. We are talking about the DB clock. DB clock works differently. So, for example, in one DB CPU seconds, you'll see four. Uh, for example, if you have 16 CPU, so within one human wall clock time, uh, the DB uh, uh, clock time is 16 seconds because within a one second, 16 parallel uh, executions can happen using those 16 different CPUs, right? So that's how the DB CPU or DB time or DB wall clock is uh, actually works, right? So that means during those 30 minutes, in total of 138 hours were actually weighted by different sessions all together combined, but never ever jump on the conclusion only ba on the basis of weights and time you always have to pay attention for average weight in milliseconds but so that this number represents out of these many times when we when the session was on was on weight the average time that any session spends on this con this event was 2907 milliseconds right and the uh, the second last column is the percentage of total call time means out of 100 percent db time so this uh, this uh, this event was responsible for 53.7 percent of the total total call time well in earlier releases of awr you will see call time in newer releases of awr report you will see as a db time right so in total 53.7 percent of the db time was actually spent only uh, only by the session simply waiting on nqtm uh, tm contention table level loss so this is a bigger problem right and what is this application class means well 
as I told you, in total, we have more than 1500 of weight events and Oracle has actually segregated or pooled them on the basis of weight class. For example, NQTM contention and NQ rollout contention always comes under application category or application class. That means these are more relevant or more specific to application coding, right? Because there is something uh, which is actually holding uh, the database into table level lock mode, right? So you have to understand that. So that's why uh, Oracle has clustered all of these weight events. For example, if we talk about application category, I think there are more than 15 or 16 different weight events that comes under this special weight class of application, right? You see another one called as user IO, where the DB file sequential read. So if we talk about the user IO weight class, we have DB file sequential read, we have DB file scattered read, we have, uh, you know, direct path read, direct path write, direct path read temp, so many others, right? So now come the, the third uh, the, the second one the second important timed weight event that is nqtx row lock contention so, so that simply means you ha you have something in your database uh, which is holding a row level lock this is not a table level lock but a row level lock and this is happening that frequent right so that means any time every time it happens on an average it waits for around 2908 milliseconds well, someone can ask me this wait time is in milliseconds, so it's way too less, right? So why to worry? But guys, we are talking about NQs. We are talking about locks. These are memory level locks, right? So these are very important, right? These are not like uh, your table, uh, you know, you simply locks anything, but this is something happening in the memory, right? So uh, this is way too high sometimes, and especially because these uh, these weights are always comes in no willing to wait mode they will simply started consuming other resources of your system. So it's very dangerous. So these two, I mean, in my entire career, I think these are the mo two most notorious uh, weight events I've seen, like uh, because th these two problems are always specific to application team. So, you know, you'll see um, uh, DB is simply, you know, uh, dropping you an email replying, OK, we are getting NQTM contention or NQTX role or contention application team. Please take a look. So that's where you have to check what exactly is causing this row lock contention, right, or table level lock. So same way, this section only provides you top five, right? It, um, but in real, you'll see uh, within those 30 periods, we have more than 100 of different weight events observed, but these are the top five, and those, those are actually ranked on the basis of total call time or the total percentage that they contribute in from the uh, contribution to the DB time. Any questions, guys? I know this is little, uh, little, uh, you know, uh, little new to you, but this is how you know one should proceed and dissect the AWR reports on the basis of weight interfaces or weight events. Any questions? <clears throat> Hello. No, you can continue. Okay, okay. All right, perfect. Ha. <sighs> OK, let's move ahead now. Time model statistics again, I will not explain this in because this is more deviation. Uh, OK, now the weight class, as I told you earlier, the Oracle actually clustered or they segregated or they combined different weight events into a application uh, into the different weight classes or categories. So application class was topping the charts. In total, application specific weight events were 303665, right? And out of them, 99.37 were simply timed out, timed out. And this this metric represents, for example, I'm a session and I try to get my hands on this NQ uh, specific lock, but someone else has already acquired or working on that request and acquired a lock and not able to release on time. So ultimately, I simply said I'll, I, I was actually kicked out or timed out. So that will be counted as one. So in total out of 100 requests, 99.37% were simply timeouts. I mean, session were not able to get their hands on time uh, in order to modify anything on the tables or rows. Total wait time is these many seconds, 880140. Average wait is 2893, but this is combined for all application wait classes, including NQTM contention, NQTX row lock contention, right? <clears throat> Next comes is the user IO. What is a user IO category? Uh, user IO is when, the, uh, for, for example, I am the session and I am uh, doing something, some work, right? I need to uh, do IOs, right? R either uh, read IO or write IO. So that actually contributes, uh, comes into the user IO. So in total, user IO 
is uh, though the weights are higher but there are no time outs and the total wait time is also less and the average weight is only 1 ms so i can simply ignore it right i simply say okay this is not the problem user ios or user specific queries or sql statements are not a problem the problem is something else we have some application weight class problems so so you simply say these two events are very high uh, i mean their average wait time is very high though their count is not that much but if you check the time the total time of those wait events plus the average wait and especially this their contribution towards the db time is very high so you simply ask your dba guy uh, uh, boss do not look anywhere else these two are the problem check what is causing nqtm contention and nqtx lock contention right and i'm sure guys by the end of this session you you simply you know will you know lot of things about the awr report so you you cannot blind you simply don't blindly trust uh, what your dba says you, you you will be in a position where you simply instruct your dba to take look on the specific sections within the awr so yeah uh, so prasant can you ask one question here uh, yes can yes, you just yes. go up, can you go up uh, i think uh, in last you are telling yeah. here this uh, one this Yes, yes. So, okay. like, when will uh, to alarm to the DBA? Like, what is the percentage should be there? Like, total call time means like right now is fifty three point seven. Okay. Yeah. When will tell to DBA? When, uh, like, we need to anal analyze right now. Like, okay, I understand. I understand your question. Any healthy DBA? I'm oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Any healthy Oracle database. If we talk about top five weight events or top fifteen, top ten weight events, you will always see CPU time. topping the charts right so you should always see right now in this system the cpu time was actually moved to a third place third spot but in idle scenario in idle situation when the database is good you will see cpu time here on rank 1 position 1 and consuming most of the db time because that is something really expected like every sql that runs in your database always consumes cpu and io right so that is something expected so if we see cpu time is there on the on position 1 on rank 1 and consuming around 50 60% of the total call time not more than 50 60% i would say because i've seen the system where the cpu consumption or cpu time is 99% or 90% so that is also a problem right so anything that ranges between 50 55% of a total uh, db time or is consumed by cpu time then it's all good system is healthy system is okay and on rank 2 if you see events like db file sequential read so you know what db file sequential read is what it happens or session wait started waiting on db file sequential read only in a situation when there are indexes for example you are querying something but and there are respective indexes on the top of it so if session is waiting to read something from the indexes in order to fulfill the request that you have thrown to your database so that means that is okay right so another one is db file scattered read what is db file scattered read db file scattered read happens when you see multiple sqls are doing uh, you know uh, large uh, full table scans for example you have got this table which has 1 crore rows and this see this sql came without the apps with uh, because in the absence of uh, indexes uh, this sql started scanning every single row out of 1 crore so that will that the session till the time that request is over or reading part is over will started waiting on db file scattered read so that is dangerous right so you can say that the db cpu is top with 53% then comes the db sequential read with for example 40 uh, for example 20% but that is fine because sessions are doing you know uh index scans so that is okay there are certain scenarios i would say where even db file sequential read can be proved harmful or dangerous right but mostly you'll see nqtm contention nqtx rule lock contention right and uh, log file sync right and db file scattered read are some problematic weight events but again guys as i told you there is not any hard and fast rule or any rule of thumb okay if we see this specific weight event only then we'll alarm our dbs we'll update him anything that is with higher call time and with higher wait time this is the most important factor do not go by total weights do not go by anything else always trust time and average weight in ms right for example if you have uh, cpu 
coming and uh, topping the charts but the average wait time is only two so that's fine right because and the total time is also less so time seconds average wait time and what the total contribution to the call time or the db time are uh, should be uh, you know decisive factors okay 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 <laughs> all right uh, all right so these are you know though we have only checked top 5 events but as i told you it, this is a database it, it at those 30 minutes you will see some other wait events too but those are only earlier section was only explaining top 5 So here you will see top five top, uh, you know, uh, NQTM contention, roll-up contention, DB file sequential, cursor pin s, latch free. Here is that DB file scattered read. What is DB file scattered read? As I told you, if session is doing a full table scan on objects, then you will see some DB file scattered read. Okay. Now next is what was the average time? I mean the total wait time. Total wait time is only one three three seven seconds. I mean in a busy system, if uh, you know we you see uh, you know uh, the total wait time. Uh, in seconds this much i mean that is okay right uh, there is always a case when it's not really possible to uh, for every single sql that runs in your database to always do the index scan right there are certain scenarios certain situation when it has to go for the full table scan so that's when the session will start wait on db file scattered read nothing to worry that's fine because average wait time ms is only one we are all good we are in good shape right so what else uh you know don't ever worry about the sql net message to client you will see 62.60% and you know the weights are very high in fact uh, one of the highest there if we talk about weights sql net message to client so the session all, always started waiting on the sql net message to client when uh, you know for this is this is what uh, this is the event what is uh, uh, where the session started waiting on when uh, something was actually sent from server to client So, for example, you are connected to a database through a SQL developer using SQL net network protocol internally. So, your session, when server has something to push back or to send back to you to your SQL developer terminal, that session will start waiting on SQL net message to client. So, this has nothing to worry. So, any event that starts with SQL net message to client or for client is of no. I mean, you need not to pay attention on that. But yeah. there are certain um, uh, wait events specific to sql net message like sql net message from db link to db link that will comes into the picture only when you are referencing or you only when you are calling any table which is outside your database you have another database on the same machine or maybe you are on a different host and you want to query something from that database right so you are actually not querying uh, from locally domestically you are actually querying from a foreign database which is hosted on a different machine so that's when you will get some sql net message from db link or to db link wait events so as i told you guys there are more than 1500 in fact 700 800 wait events so it's really not possible to explain about each one of them but yeah the very popular one are nqtm contention nqtx log contention db file sequential read uh, db file scattered read right and log file sync log file Uh, and uh, what else uh, uh, latch cache buffer chains right and uh, uh, yeah i mean these are some pop these are some popular ones right although there are a lot of obscure uh, wait events which have you know which oracle has added into 12c and there are there are newer releases but let's not discuss about them okay the what are the now we have discussed about the four ground wait events top five four ground top four ground events but what are the background wait events and what are this log file parallel right so when you are doing your work i mean when your session is doing any work right so there are some internal operations happening beneath your request which are which are processed or you know executed by the uh, by the by the database itself right so though your session is doing some work but database internally has to do um, has to help your session to complete your request right so db for example this one is log file parallel right so this happens when you have lot of re redo information uh, in your memory area and uh, you know this log writer process has to write that information physically on the disk on the redo log buffer so then that log writer process has started waiting on log file parallel write right so this is something which has nothing to do with your uh, with your session where, where it actually querying or do a select or a, or an update but internally when you for example your session is doing an update and your session 
is generating lot of redo because you you are making lot of changes, right? So that means at that point of time you have collect, you have generated lot of redo information. That information uh, cannot reside for a very long time in your memory, considering the size of your database and considering how busy your database is. So ultimately, that has to be moved uh, in the form of archives by the R redo by the log writer process. So that's when you know it started the log writer process, which is a background process. Uh, which helps to flush that information from the redo log buffer to the disk. That's when it started waiting on log file parallel write. So these are background wait events, but you guys being a DBA, let's not discuss much about it. Uh, operating system statistics. This is very important uh, metric. Like what was the load at that point of time during those 30 minutes? So if you see the load was very low, the only one. One was the total load, right? And now guys, if we talk about what is the load, so uh, load is what? Load is a combination of I/O weights, right, and the CPU weights, and uh, the yeah, this is a combination of these two, right? So load is plus CPU weights plus I/O weights. <sighs> okay, now what is the idle time? What is the busy time? These two are another important two metrics. Busy time is the total amount of time, right, when the system was busy, right, and idle time is when the system was doing nothing. So if you see the system was busy most of the time. 1473979 out of total resources available, total time available to the system, and idle time was only 1384. Though the numbers are little, you know, almost uh, not much difference between the two, but yeah, still, I, I would say the system was little busy as compared to the idle time, right? And what was the IO time, uh, IO wait time this much? And what was the sys time? Sys time is when the system is doing internal operation, recursive operations, right? Okay, what was the user time? So, user time was very higher. So out of the total time, this much time was spent on user on user queries when the user was doing some operations, right? And another one is number of CPUs and number of CPU sockets. That's how you'll be able to know how many CPUs you have in your database server. OK, another one. I'm leaving the above two sections, but now I'm jumping into the SQL statistics. Guys, this is the most important part, especially for the developers, right? if they want to know what was happening in the database in terms of SQL execution. So SQL statistics section, they, the Oracle actually, this AWR report was divided or uh, you know sorted on the basis of elapsed time. Elapsed time means SQL ordered by elapsed time means this, this, this part will be uh, sorted on the basis of elapsed time. What was the total runtime uh, that was uh, incurred or uh, spent by S that specific SQL. So now if we see this specific section here, someone can simply say, OK, boss, uh, th the total uh, elapsed time is this much. OK, this, this SQL is problematic. No, this is not. But if you see, this is the total elapsed time seconds. Always go for per execution seconds. This one means whenever this SQL executed on the database, how much time it actually took to complete the how it how much time the single execution time it took to complete. Because if you see 1439.44 seconds, how much minutes? Uh, two. How many minutes? 23 minutes. OK. Oh. OK, so so that means. Total executions were 512. And every time the SQL got executed, it takes around 23 minutes to complete. So this is an expensive SQL. I won't consider this SQL, which only which only takes 7.63 seconds to complete, or this one, which only which not, which not even takes a seconds, only nanoseconds or milliseconds to complete. So I won't pay my attention for these two SQLs, or even for this one, this, which spends only 22 seconds. But my focus will be for this one. Why it's taking 23 minutes, and what why what exactly is this SQL? Just click on this SQL ID, a clickable tab. It will show you it's actually doing some update on info counter text and doing this is this right? OK, so total executions were 512. So that means this this uh, out of the, I mean, if you talk about the CPU time out of the total executions, only 58 seconds were spent on the CPU. I mean, that means this SQ, this SQL uh, don't eat much of the CPU. It has no love for the CPU, but it has some other requirements, maybe IO, right? So this is not a CPU intensive statements, but in total the elapsed time per a single execution for this SQL is very high. In fact, if you see that this that its contribution for the total DB time available, it was close to 81.33. That's way too high, right? Another one. 
if you talk about this sql in total the executions were 504003 i mean this sql uh, comes with a with a massive workload i mean within a period of 30 minutes this awr is of 30 minutes right so within a period of almost 30 minutes this sql got executed 504003 times but the single execution was only 0.00 right so this is basically not in seconds in fact this is an ms right so this is of i mean it's all, all okay right this is no problem there is no problem with it and another one if you check this one if someone ask me what are the top two most expensive sqls on the basis of elapsed time total run time i will say first one is this one another one is this only single execution happened during those 30 minutes and that actually took 1 2 6 8 seconds to complete what exactly is this let's see it says this is okay this basically doing some you know some functions applying some functions on this a1 request column and then doing some operation then group by so the lot of sorting is expected from this sql so maybe that's why it's taking lot of time so if you have you got your awr report always go and jump to the elapsed time section sql ordered by elapsed time and always look for the sequels which has higher elapsed per execution seconds so first this one is most expensive sql another one is this one right this is of no use right this is you know uh, okay statements i won't pay my attention for this one and if i ask me what what will be the third most expensive in sql i will say this this one only 15 executions those this is not cpu intensive but only 15 executions happened but whenever it happens it takes around 979 seconds to complete right and what is this let's click on it it's an update on this one okay fine now you see everything is okay in the elapsed time in terms of elapsed time every single sql that is there in this section are okay right you you didn't notice anything now but the another one another section the second section is sql ordered by cpu time how much cpu was consumed by the C, by the sequels now again you have to uh, take uh, you have to pay your attention for this tab again cpu per execution seconds how much cpu was spent during a single execution of this specific sql statement if you check this column this one is top right so out of you know uh, you know it, though it's happening only once only single execution happened successfully during those 30 minutes it it you know and uh, you know it it takes around this much these many seconds and interestingly if you see this was the total elapsed time so it took around 1 2 6 8 seconds and out of 1 2 6 8 seconds 651.32 was simply spent on waiting for cpu or consuming or burning cpus right okay another expensive sequel in terms of cpu is was this one single execution and this actually took around 578 seconds out of the total cpu right so single execution and the cpu per execution uh, seconds was higher any any question guys hello you there guys yes 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 okay all right now if you check what was the sql module what exactly was the program what which which executes this query so this report was from bscs i did a you know um, an analysis a performance analysis one of the customer way back in 2017 where that was a billing server running on 10g so that at that point of time this was the bill sir was one of the user oracle dch pth if you guys are familiar with the with the bscs so these are some you know some common modules there so dch was there pth for billing right and uh, bill serve so this was the module information okay now next section is sql ordered by gets if you remember i discussed about the buffer reads let me take you to what, where i was coming from logical reads i mentioned i you know use this term like it's always good to have you know reads directly from the memory instead of uh, reads happening from the disk or physical ios so logical io or logical read is always good so sql and uh, gets so this section is all about it so sql ordered by gets means uh it's basically sorted on the basis of sqls which are consuming uh uh you know which are uh, using lot of buffer area or doing lot of reads from the memory or from the buffer right if we check here gets per execution will be the deciding factor if you want to declare if you want to say okay this one is expensive in terms of gets always read gets per execution how many gets or how many memory reads 
were uh, memory reads uh, you know uh, happened for a single execution for this sql now if you compare this one is the most expensive right only single execution right and these many blocks were actually uh, these many memory reads were uh, happened during a single execution of this sql and what was this sql this sql was doing a count on this one right so this is again is expensive in terms of memory reads right as i told you why memory reads are expensive they pr can prove expensive when you are doing some huge amount of memory reads and you have other sessions too who are doing almost same operation right then you they you will see some shortage of memory level locks right because level locks are needs to be acquired by the session in order to traverse in order to travel across you know uh, the memory areas right so it's always good to have memory reads but not excessive right so if someone says okay uh, okay i have another awr report for that that's fine okay sql ordered by read, reads this section tells you about or updates you about SQL which are ordered on the basis of physical reads like disk IO where the disk IO is happening. I mean SQLs are coming. They're not seeing they're not able to find that respective block what they're looking for in the memory. So ultimately they have to do a IO. They have to go to the disk and read that block, right? So that's when it is count as a PIO or physical IO. So what are the top SQLs which are doing maximum amount of physical IOs or reading lot of things from the disk? OK, again this one reads per execution you have to focus 7943 these many uh, reads or disk reads were hap were actually uh, executed or happened during a single execution for this sql right this one which starts with this right so in total um, i will see what are the common sqls right in these top four sections elapse time cpu time gets or read so if someone asks me like what uh, what will be you know the most expensive sql in terms of you know uh, memory reads or buffer reads executions and cpu or you know elapsed time then i have to pick the one which is common between these four sections and we will have our most expensive statement right there are a lot of other ways as well how you can get this information if not from awr because if i talk about myself i you know i usually not prefer to get this information i you always you know dirty my hands log into the system and do the command line uh, you know because i am i still consider myself as you know command line dba so i rarely use guis i prefer to connect with the database and then you know get this information but being developer coming from an application background this will be of huge uh, benefit huge uh, <clears throat> okay let's not talk about the version count and parse calls and execution well execution i can say i, I can discuss but you know uh, how many executions you know happened in total for the SQL and how many rows were processed right so here in this case you can simply you know uh, you can rely on the very first column executions like for this SQL this ex this SQL got executed these this many time like 504003 so if you see like there like, okay for example you have received a complaint from the uh, from the customer okay the system is slow what I should do right and <clears throat> Now even DBA says, OK, I see a huge spike in the total workload. Now I see earlier we have system only 60 percent busy, but now I can see 80 percent. So now this section can be a very helpful SQL ordered by execution. Here you can see if there is a spike in total workload or total execution. For example, in you in, in a general days or usually we have only 1000 executions for this SQL. But now during this 30 minutes, we see some 504003 number of executions. So you see some 70 percent increment in the executions, right? So there is a definitely a problem. There is something which has called this SQL in batch mode, maybe from anywhere, from either any user or any DBA or anyone who has privilege to do that, right? So you need to understand why you we seen we see a sharp inclination, sharp, sharp ascent or a sap in the total executions for this SQL. Accordingly, you have to uh, plan your strategy to move ahead, right? So this section SQL ordered by execution can be very helpful in those situations or scenarios, right? Next move, Pascal. Let's leave it version count top you know, this section is you know where you'll get SQL information for all of them like who, whatever that executed in your system um, i won't uh, okay let, let's 
do it like this way. Uh, I have few reports. <coughs> okay. Hmm. Now, <coughs> as I told you, till now we only discussed about AWR reports. There are few things as well in AWR which I would like to cover, but again, considering the shortage of time, I won't be able to explain much about them. So let's quickly jump into this thing called ASH. What is this ASH? What's the purpose of ASH? So ASH is basically, uh, it, uh, you know, it's a 10G feature. It was introduced in 10G along with AWR report, right? It was pretty underutilized. I see a lot of DBAs, a lot of people don't even aware about the term called ASH. They never ever use it. But if you see, like the problem with the AWR report is you cannot generate an AWR report less than 10 minutes. So for example, if you have a transient variation or a short performance spike that happened only for a fraction of seconds or maybe a one minute, you won't be able to generate the AWR report for a one minute, right? Because ultimately it will provide you report for 10 minutes and you know, who knows, your system is very busy and you it simply averaged out that problem. You won't be able to see that sharp spike anymore in your AWR report because the system is too busy, right? So that's where ASH comes into the picture. So ASH has that right, that that, that ability to generate an, uh, a report even for a few minutes or even for a second. So if you want to generate a report for only th those problematic two minutes, you will be able to do that. That's the biggest advantage of generating the ASH report. So you never get your your weight events averaged out, your problems averaged, averaged out or maxing out due to the sh larger time span of the problem. So problem happened only for one minute, but the AWR cannot allow you to generate a AWR report less than 10 minutes. Minimum period for AWR is 10 minutes. So ultimately you won't be able to see the, those problems. So ASH comes into the picture, into the frame. So that will uh, definitely help you. Now, the other advantage I see, like for example, you see some wait events, right? You see some NQTM contention, NQTM roll lock contention, but AWR doesn't provide you that information. What was the SQL that was frequently waiting on that specific wait event? You, you still do not have that information from the AWR. That's the problem with the AWR. It provides you information for the overall SQL it has noticed are expensive in terms of CPU, in terms of elapsed time, in terms of logical read, in terms of reads, in terms of execution, but it doesn't provide you the SQL which was responsible for that specific role of contention. Why, what exactly was there in the system which was causing that humongous growth in uh, in uh, NQTM rule lock contention or NQTM table level logs, right? So you still do not have information. So ASH is the right place. Always ask your DBAs to provide ASH as well. But in the newer releases of 12C, you the moment you generate the AWR report, it always appended at the end of the AWR report. So now you do not have to ask separately ASH reports. It comes combined. Collective reports are there starting from 12C release one, I guess. That's at 17 or 16 something. OK, so coming back to rack, this is our AWR report. Earlier AWR report, we actually uh, scanned some, you know, some common sections, what all to where, uh, where to go, what to check, right? But this one is of most importance. If you see, this is not a normal rack, uh, normal AWR report. This is a rack report, right? Rack report is, for example, you have an Oracle database, which is, which is running on a two node rack or a three node rack or a five node rack. So, that report you have to generate individually on all of your nodes because every node has its own set of SQLs running and it, its own workload that is catering to. So this rack report is a collective report, is a combined report which provides you the overall interface, overall health or a face of a database, right? Uh, okay, now we have two instances, this one or a three and or a four. Let's quickly jump into, uh, here we go. OK, now if you see, this is a star. Star means what? This is the average of both instance one and instance two. Like if you check this section, this is dedicated for instance one, node number one of your rack, right? What was happening in the node one, right? And if you talk about this one, this one is no, what's what all happening in node number two, right? And if you talk about this one star, this is an average. Uh, or uh, average for both one and two, right? So if we check node number one during that specific period, we, I can see that NQTX roll lock contention happening quite frequently, right? And in total, though the overall DB time was quite less, only 8.26 percentage of DB time was consumed. But if we check the average weights, this is not in MS Boss, this is seconds, 18.99 second for for a single weight is way, way too high. 
right every other weight event it's in milliseconds or even in fact less than that uniseconds but this one is in second this is excessively high 18.99 second almost 90 seconds very high right so the total contribution towards the db time is though is very less and we have db cpu at the top but as i told you average weight here average weight will help you right 18.99 seconds is very high so now you simply uh, understand okay there is a problem in the database and this nqtx rollo contention is waiting for sessions are waiting on this wait event for a very long time on average it it started waiting on uh, waiting for 19 to 20 seconds what about node number 2 instance 2 here as well nqtx rollo contention is coming with in fact with a higher value almost 20 seconds so any session that goes and hits instance 2 there it started waiting for this event for almost 20 seconds so we have a problem in both node 1 and node 2 but node 2 is the one the severe affected right where we have performance issue uh, for this application uh, this application class nqtx rollo contention very high now what is what will be the next thing uh, you will be able uh, you want to check now you want to check what is the object right Uh, what is the object that is uh, that is under this um, uh, or what exactly was the sql now go to the bottom of this report sorry uh, bottom of the report is this uh, this one active session history report ash report now if you check like what was the sql which was waiting on nqtx rollo contention so nqtx rollo contention was here this one was the sql which was waiting on nqtx rollo contention and what is that click on it this was an update as i told you update delete or insert these kind of manipulations can incur or can bring nqtx rollo contention right so this someone fired this update and other session which are trying to update the same row but first session didn't committed its work or roll back it or control c or shut down its laptop he actually failed to do that so that's why the second session has to wait on the specific just to uh, on the specific wait just to maintain the concurrency of the database right so we now we are sure we are, our database is slow because we have nqtx rollo contention is happening though the db time is less but the average wait time like whenever session waits on this is simply started waiting on for 20 seconds on an average if it hits on node 2 and if it hits on node 1 almost 18 to 18.5 seconds so it is way too sql where it's actually waiting for so it, this is this is one this is the update statement it's modifying some some table called tilt testing master right <clears throat> what else what else um, num, num, num. and uh, prashant is there any yeah. any section in the report in awr or ash report any recommendation if the, if we will need to increase any memory or yeah of course yes as i told you starting from 12c in fact not even 12c 11g release to patch set 4 we have got the awr report along with ash report so ash and addm report as now appended into the uh, awr report so now after awr section gets over we have aw uh, ash report section and then after that we have this addm automatic diagnostic uh, uh uh what's the full form of addm automatic diagnostic manage something okay addm report is there what is addm addm provides some automatic recommendations to you right if you go below and check what was recommendations like it's the first section says top cpu statements cpu usage and undersize the uh, sga and take a look row lock weights it also considered like we have some massive row lock contentions happening right but if we talk about the overall active session of the total history so we've seen the top sql statements were actually consuming most of the time so here you'll see let's see what was the it says this is one of the most expensive statement and in fact this is responsible for 16.35% of the total activity and this sql if we talk about this one this spend 99% time of its time on cpu io and cluster weights so this one right so now you can ask your dba guy um, uh, man please go ahead and check this sql which is coming with this sql id and with this sql text what is the problem why is taking so much cpu io and cluster weight events so then he has let's wait uh, and wait for its recommendation or his advisor you know 
uh, instructions. And second most expensive as per ADDM, which is contributing 13.44 for the total activity is this one where it's seek the SQL spending 100% of its time on CPU IO and cluster weight events. Right. Uh, and in fact, if you check, uh, it provides you some more information like it says full table scan of table partition BVOS TD testing master client def is happening, right? So now you we are clear like this table which is owned by BVOS user and table name is this and it's part. This is a partition table and its partition name is client underscore def is where it's spending most of its time because it's taking it's doing a full table scan, right? So it's consumed 23% of the database time spent on this SQL statement. So ask your DBA guy. OK, check this 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 uh, this SQL and I guess this is doing a full table scan on this table and especially for this uh, partition, right? Another one is for SQL tuning. OK, let's leave. Uh, SQL tuning, SQL tuning. Yeah, this one here. If you see it says this update statement this and this SQL spent only though it spent only 1% on the CPU IO and cluster. The total database time spent in processing the SQL statement with this. So that means this SQL is the culprit. This SQL is responsible for all those NQTX log contentions, though we have identified this thing through Ash, right? But you can get this information through ADDM reports as well, right? So ADDM also says this SQL was responsible uh, for massive amount of NQTX log contention weight events. What next? CPU usage. Uh, it says we have 62.33% CPU used, right? On instance two, why there is a usage mismatch? So it says consider adding more CPU. Okay, guys, please do not you know blindly rely on ADDM recommendations. You see sometimes it says increase the degree of parallelism by 1000 times and you only have 16 or 32 CPU. That's not possible, right? Because this this basically this this works on some Oracle predefined heuristics, right? It it or algorithms, right? So it simply gets this information from them. You can trust about the SQL tuning part and rest of the recommendations, but never ever blindly rely on increasing the CPU because you cannot go over the night and you know say ask your customer okay increase the CPU and that will help us. No, it's not possible. You have to procure. You have to prove, like okay this is the cause why we are asking for the CPU usage. You cannot simply say okay, our ADM report is saying increase the CPU or increase the parallelism. We let's do it. No, it's not not like that. And same is the case with the undersized SGA, right? Because if you check about the CPU. It's only talking about those 30 minutes. What about the rest of the 23 hours, 30 minutes of, of the total day, right? Everything was going smooth at that point of time. So it's no, you, you know, it's not possible to increase the CPU. It's not even a good solution to do that. Under size SGA, I mean SGA size, the memory area of the overall SGA or system global area is insufficient. It says the, it's busy by this much, right? So increase the size of the SGA uh, on effective instance, instances. Again, this needs a lot of analysis, right? You have to understand that and perform a trend analysis what all times during the day we have SG usage you know spiking up right or going high or it's going uh, you know way too high or whatever right so you have to understand you have to get those max min and average median values and after studying at least 30 to 40 days of the system of, of a system usage only then if you're seeing something is happening constantly then only recommend or come up with a solution okay this is the problem happening every day every night let's change let's increase the SGA size but again this are few the these are few the things which dba you know should uh, do the analysis and do the uh, and you know put the recommendation forward to your customers okay that's the end i you know about uh, the awr and ash guys you have any questions <sighs> no OK, uh, I have few more things uh, guys. If you want to stay on this call for another 30 minutes because we have planned till 30 uh, tw till 12, right? So we have another 1142. We have another few minutes right to to go. So let I would like to discuss more about the SQL developer session, right? I told you uh, you can create a user, right? And uh, grant free privileges like select select any dictionary or DBMS workload repository. How how exactly we can do that? Let's quickly connect. Uh, Wait just a second. Let me start my virtual machine. <clears throat>
now in this demo what I'll be doing I'll be creating a new session new account. I'll be adding few privileges and we'll check and we'll create a brand new or a fresh session connection in your SQL developer and there I will try to execute or try to generate the AWR report, right? OK, it's up. Create user. Let's name it a train identified by Oracle 90. All right, so we have created a user name as train and assigned a password called as Oracle 90. Now, the very basic uh, privileges that you know that we the DB always assign to a user is this: grant, create, session to train. All right, so let's quickly try to connect. Train Oracle 90. Wow. Show user. All right. So we are connected with the data with this new user, right? Let's quickly open our SQL developer session. And uh, yeah, grant select any. Re oh, OK, sorry. Grant select any. Dictionary to train grant a grant uh, execute on the underscore train granted. Okay, so now we have granted this permission cause a selected addiction and this this again this is not a sensitive privilege or permission. You can simply say your DB or your customer. We are only asking to run our select statements on V dollar DBA tables. This doesn't allow a select operation on your customized table or application tables, right? And if we talk about this one, it's only allowing this account to generate the AWR report, which is again a lightweight uh, process, right? So these are not at all sensitive privileges or permission. You can simply explain this to your customer and they will uh, or they will ask the DBA to add these two permissions to any new account. All righty, let's create a session. Now, train session. Uh, username is password. Save the password. Then the DB. Okay, success. Cool. Let's connect. <coughs> OK, we are connected now. Do this plus tab in the DBA. Train is already selected. Do it OK. <clears throat> Expand it. And then go to performance and then AWR and then AWR report viewer. Right and then select your snaps. 54 to <clears throat> 55. Do a click on this button and you have your AWR report on the way. Right guys. Um, uh, yes, Prashant, but yeah. how do we get this uh, snap ID? Snap ID. OK, let me do once again for you. Click no, no. on this. Uh, how check do I know the snap ID? So, so I should check only the time time. Yes, time. we have st uh, start interval time as well, right? For example, 945, 950, we have snaps generated every five minutes here in this case. Not 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 every five minutes. It's, it's randomly distributed, but you can always check for start interval time. For example, if you want to check database performance from 945 till 950, right? So do this 945 here. And then select for the next item, right? Yeah, and and uh, we also discussed that the AWR report will have a minimum time period of 30 minutes. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's correct. At least 10 minutes. I'm sorry. AWR, you cannot generate an AWR report less than 10 minutes. 
right? If you want to generate an AWR for five minutes, not possible. For one minute, not possible. Even for nine minutes, not possible. That's the that's the limit. Ten minutes, at least ten minutes of AWR uh, information you will be you will be able to generate. If if you want to go below, you can always check Ash reports and how you can generate the Ash report. Ash report viewer here for the last five minutes, or if you want to specify a time. Like from this time to this time, I would like to check the performance of the database. You can do that. So you can do the ash. You can do this. You can do that everything. And if you check, I have created this train, which is a which which is you know a general user account. And this this is not a sys DBA or has some special rights or privileges. If you check, if you go on uh, the database status. Status. Instance viewer. Now you will be able to see everything. What is what what's all going on in a database like in terms of SQL execution, total wait events like this is the session. If you see like this window which I've highlighted or this graph provides you information about sessions. So yellow one means inactive. Green means we have these many sessions which are doing some work and are active. This is for the weights. What are the different classes application commit concurrency configuration user IO system IO others and network here you see. Most of the space, uh, most of the color is blue. That means we have user IOs happening, and now we have less, you know, uh, more network IO means we have some network operations, uh, you know, happening. Some uh, thing really another one. So this one in the in light blue color is for system IO. And now if you see, we see a spike. Spike is about to come. We see a spike uh, where we see a system IO was increased. And now we have something more coming in orange color as a configuration weight events. Right and now what I did I simply. If you want to read something more uh, just a second. Huh? Uh, like what are the weights at this point of time because it only providing you class information not providing you the event names. Double click on it. And this is where you are. Application class this this total time weighted. And everything, right? And what are the SQL text top segments? It doesn't have this information because my system is not that loaded right now. Only some recursive operations happening. Otherwise, you will see some events. What are the respective SQLs waiting on those events? What are the SQL text? So, as I told you, in fact, a lot of things you you, you need not even you know you, you need not to go for a AWR to get right. You can get that information directly from your SQL developer session as well. So all you need select any dictionary privilege and execute on DBMS workload repository. That's it. All right, so I, we have <clears throat> another 10 minutes, though I have planned one SQL tuning advisor demo as well. So let me show you that one. Uh, Prashant, just a one question. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Um, actually, regarding that AWR snapshot which you yeah. are taking, so yes. usually when issue come on production, yeah. at that time uh, people are not sure like uh, what what when it come and uh, what exactly is the time uh, it comes. So usually we take the AWR. Uh, for one hour or two hour. So how we can uh, because there the option was just uh, five minutes or 10 minutes or 15 minutes were coming as a snap ID. So how we can take one complete AWR for one hour. Uh, you can do possible? that. Yeah, of course you can do that. In fact, if you want to take AWR a single AWR for entire week, the only condition uh -huh. is your database shouldn't be bounced or stopped in that. between. Okay, right. Okay. If your database is bounced or stopped in between, to, to snap. For example, you are passing as 100 as a begin snap and 130 as the end snap. But within those snap interval, there yeah. is a bounce yeah. happened. The yeah. database got abruptly shut down. So in that case, you won't be able to generate the AWR report. You simply throw an error. It says okay, the instance got bounced. You won't be able to generate the continuous report for this. So that's the only condition. Otherwise, you will be able to generate even for a week. In fact, if your database is running constantly for months or years, then of course you can be able to do that as well. The only difference is the AWR size will be higher, right? It will take some more time to yeah. generate. Right. So basically, okay. we can pass the start snap ID and end yes. snap ID. That's that's correct. That's correct. Okay. And Thanks. yeah, and the retention of AWR, like how long AWR data will be maintained in the database, a and how frequently you know the AWR snap will be generated, right? It is controlled by the DBA by default. Thirty, I think. Uh, seven, eight days, eight days of AWR report. I mean, if you do a default installation of Oracle database, there you will see eight days of AWR snaps 
will be preserved by the database or will be saved on the disk, right? So if you have a problem that has happened seven days back, so you can get that information. If you have any problem that is a nine days old, you won't be able to do that. So in that case, you have to ask your, and it's always good. In fact, in production shops, uh, in uh, 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 in projects, I've seen uh, it always consider for a higher, uh, 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 set it for a higher value, like 30 days, 60 days, or even 90 days. I've seen when systems are not that stable, and uh, every now and then we've seen some sporadic or you know some intermittent problems. So all customer always want to uh, set up higher uh, retention for the AWR. And if you ch talk about interval, like how frequently AWR should like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes or one hour, then you have to again ask your DBAs if you are facing some frequent problems. As I told, less is always good, right? So do not gen do not keep in a highly unstable system. Do not set AWR retention wind, uh, AWR interval as one hour, like AWR generating after every one hour when you have problem ha happening every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes. Ask him to reduce it to uh, and set it to 10 minutes, not set to 60 minutes, right? Because if you set it for longer duration, the problem will the problem. Uh, there is a risk of problems getting maxed out or averaging out, right? You won't be able to identify it. So it's always good. But again, if that's not possible somehow, uh, then of course you can always ask for ash report. So ask for a 10 minute report if it's configured for 10 minutes, right? And accordingly ask for an ash report as well, right? And if you are very sure, like if you 10 minutes window only uh, the problem was only for two minutes. So always ask for two minutes ash reports from the DBA, right? Give us ash report as well for that two minute and it's fine if you provide me 10 minutes AWR report, but I, I I'm sure like this problem happened during those two minutes only provide me ash report for those two minutes. OK. OK, OK, and how we can because, uh, uh, because you are expanding. So one more question I can. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, how yeah. we can increase the time of that uh, AWR like uh, default is eight uh, days. So if we have to you select. Uh, all from I let me think DB underscore. Yeah. If you check in my database, we have a default of eight days. I mean retention is let me see. Let me show you. Uh, select um, uh, snap interval, like how frequently the snap should generate from. OK, so every one hour. After every sec 60 seconds, we have our new snap generated by default, right? And it only is only preserved for eight days. That's the default because this is just a test system I've created for this session. So that's why you know this is the default one. <clears throat> eight days data will be uh, you will be able to check eight day. You can go back eight days, but and uh, not ninth day or anything beyond that. And the every one hour you'll have your new snap generated. But there is another best thing. With AWR, suppose if you are doing an activity, if you know AWR retention is set for 60 minutes and you are going to do a test on the system and you want your DBA to generate the uh, AWR report, ask him to create manual reports. Ask him to create a manual report. For example, let me show you. This is very important, guys, because I see you know DBAs are started making fool of uh, developers. Uh, SQL TRPT dot SQL. <coughs> no, no. Mm. Hey, Prashant, are we continuing after 12? Uh, maybe for five or 10 minutes, if guys are okay, because I'm going to explain re really important, cool things. Not more than that, five or 10 minutes, no more than that. Okay, that's sure. Sounds fine. Uh, AWR. Okay, HTML. Now, number of days, four. Now, if you see, sorry, <clears throat> if you see here, the snap last we have for 9th of November 2020. From 20 uh, till 21 to 51. For example, you are now going to execute a test, a load stress on your system through application, but the default AWR retention is of 60 minutes. But you are sure, like your your activity won't long for more uh, more than 10 minutes, right? Or more than 15 minutes. So what you can ask, you can ask your DBA to create a manual snapshot. So before you begin your activity, ask him to create a snapshot manually. And once you are end with your activity, again, create a manual uh, AWR report. How you, how you can do that? Execute DBMS 
workload load repository yes create underscore snapshot so this one will create a manual snap for you what is the date right now it's 2208 right and do some operations for example if you are done right you're done with your activity now you want to generate the final uh, snap which will cover your entire activity then do it again okay go oh, right and let's check if we have our snaps ready or not awrrpt.sql html one day now if you see you have your new snap snap 156 157 this one is when you started your activity right another one is one when you ended your activity so you can also ask them to create your manual snapshot for example if you have a you know uh, a snapshot uh, 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 the interval is of 60 minutes or maybe higher than that and your activity won't long uh, uh, doesn't go beyond 10 minutes or 15 or 30, 20 30 minutes then ask him to create a manual snapshot before the activity and an end snapshot when the activity is over and provide that area lua report ash report covering the same duration and addm and all of these three things will come automatically if, if you are doing your test on 12c uh, any system that is about 12c if it's lower than that then of course ask them separately what the iridium report ash reports and awr reports okay yeah yeah thanks basically okay. if uh, i have to modify the a test uh -huh. then i need to get into that table and modify and uh, is it bounce required 